Hey designers, welcome to my desk, welcome back to a new video. I want to document my process today as I give some development feedback on a design that I created and that the developer I work with Corey has built and sent to me to look at. Being able to look at a design, evaluate the build and give feedback to a developer is an important part of being a web designer if you're not building out the site yourself. Um, it's also a good process to go through, I suppose, if you are building out your own design for like critiquing it and making sure things are where they're supposed to be and doing what they're supposed to do. I'm very lucky that Corey, who has a YouTube channel of his own, by the way, I'll leave a link to it down below in the description. He's a great developer. He's got a good eye for design. So um, there's often not a lot of huge things that I need to give feedback on, but there's always little details and things that I see because I'm the one who created the design and they might have gotten missed in translating the design from Figma over to code. So I want to show you my process today for how I look at a build and send feedback to Corey on it. So this is the page that we're going to be looking at. It is the build of a page I designed to promote our free migration service that we have. So if you're moving to ConvertKit from another tool, we will help you move over for free and get all set up. So that's what this page is communicating. I actually did a video where I walked through my planning and wireframing process of this project. I never did the design phase. So if you'd be interested in that, vote on the poll up on screen right now. Anyway, um, the first thing that I do when I am coming to evaluate a design, let me move this down so that you can see, is I use this little Chrome extension to take a full page screen capture. Um, Cause what I do, and then download that, is I upload a capture of the design to Envision and that's where I leave notes for Corey. And I talked about this in my video that I did about Envision, but here in this video, you're gonna get to see that in more detail. So I've created a new section called Dev Feedback. I'm gonna come and I have to make sure that I add at 2x on the end because that's what tells Envision that this is retina. And I also like to just compress the image because it's 2.9 megabytes and that's a, that's a big screenshot. Once it's compressed, then I would just drag it, the much smaller file, into this dev feedback section in Envision. So this is be, gonna be where I leave the comments and this will kind of act as a checklist for Corey to go through, but I will look at it in this view so that I'm looking at the live page, obviously. What I do is basically just start from the top and work my way all the way down. And this is the first draft that Corey has sent me, so he knows that there's still some things to work on, but it's my first chance to get a look at what he's built and start giving feedback. Um, for comparison, this is the design that Corey is working from. And he's already let me know that the curve is a thing that is still to come. So I'm not gonna bother to give feedback on that because he already knows that that's the thing that he's still gonna add. What I end up doing is basically flipping between my design in Figma and the build and just seeing what the differences are and uh, what I need tweaked, basically. So the first thing I notice is that this icon here looks very close to the top. I'm gonna come into Figma and just measure around about what the space was that I gave this. And I like to measure just by drawing rectangles. I know there's other ways to do it. So yeah, this is about 85 pixels of space here. And that's definitely not as much there. So first piece of feedback that I'm gonna go in and give, load this page, turn on comments, and I'll say, um, see how this comment as well has this Marcus resolved. So this is what Corey goes through and does when he makes the changes. This is a functioning form, but I'm just gonna do a pass of the page first before I interact with that and check it. Another thing that Corey already let me know that he hasn't worked on yet is the arrows between these. So again, I'm not gonna bother to give feedback on that. This SVG doesn't like, see how the boxes are thicker than the ones I have here? I think something's gone wrong when I exported that. So I'm just gonna leave a comment about that and that might be something that I, I need to fix. Next thing is this quote. Um, like I said, Corey's got a good eye for design. So I love that he has highlighted uh, this last line in bold because it's a most convincing line of this testimonial. So that's cool. That's not something that I put in the design is the thing he added and it's great. One thing that needs to change though is in my design, this quote is italicized and this is actually a change that I wanna make across all the quotes on our site. Sometimes I make little changes to patterns that we already have set up and I forget to highlight them. So yeah. Mm. 
The next thing that I'm seeing is the spacing is a bit off. See how there's more space here than there is here? I would prefer those to be even. That's what I kind of mocked up in this design. And it looks like it's really the blue that needs a bit more space. Um, yeah, let's leave that as a feedback. We're still working on getting a good design system built in code. Um, so I know that once we have that, it's gonna mean a lot less of these little small issues because a lot of the stuff that I often do in my designs will just become standard in uh, our code in the build. This heading here looks too small to me. I'm not sure if I made it that small um, in my design. It's an H2 and in here, uh, let's come in. Sometimes I go and inspect element as well, just to play around with things. Okay, so it is an H2, but it has a special font size on it. So what's happening there? I also don't understand rem as font sizes. So sometimes I use this to see what it's telling me. Pretty boring but the text is formatted all good so yep um, next thing I notice is that this here has uneven spacing I'd intended it to match the pattern that we have on these pages here where there is like even space above and below um, so that's something that I neglected to point out to Corey before we started which again this is just another reason why the design system in code is gonna help us I'm just gonna check how many columns I had this thing spanning. Yep, that looks about the same. Yes, what's live, cool. This button seems a little smaller though, interestingly. Um... Yeah, there we go. So because I used to code our marketing site, which is actually why we got into the mess where things are not aligned, it's my fault. Um, I do know what classes and things we have set up so I can go in uh, in developer tools and change things to then to suggest to Corey exactly what he needs to add to, to get it to be what I was imagining. That's the first run of the page and the next thing I'm going to do is look at it at a few different screen sizes. So let's shrink it in, see what happens here. This looks fine, there's still that same issue of course. I was just noticing that this text here needs to look a little bit different on my, what is essentially a vertical iPad screen. So uh, I can come in the code and change classes. We use Bootstrap for our grid to see what would be best here. I think it helps to do this rather than just me saying this should be wider. Um, if I take the time to go in and see exactly what needs to change, then it can help Corey and we're speaking the same language. As part of the design system that we are currently working on implementing, we wanna have um, common classes for spacing too. So instead of me saying up here where I said the exact pixels that I think thought the padding needed to be, we're gonna have a language together for talking about that. So I can say this needs medium spacing, for example, and he'll put that in and um, yeah, it'll, it'll be what we need it to be. Okay, so I've had a look at that. Now let's refresh the page and look at how this form works. So basically when I interact with this, it's gonna then show me the table of what migration options are available for different subscriber accounts. So let's see how it's working. Cool, I love how he's done this little spin around thing here. This is again, another reason why Corey is great. I didn't ask him to do that. He just thought that would be cool and he added it, which is awesome. So let's see what happens if I say this. Okay, so I don't like how that change there. I want to make sure that these fields are the same width all the time because I just presented him with a static mock-up. That's not something he could have known before and not something that I would have thought would be a problem. And let's say that and then we'll show it. Cool. So I like the functionality of that. I just don't like how things change around when you're moving the form.
Now I'm going to take a full page screenshot of the different options here that you get uh, when you fill out the form. Okay, so I think, yeah, there needs to be slightly less space in here. So we'll leave that as feedback. what the font size I used there. I think this is because I've gone off <laughs> off our set font size and used 15 pixels when we have 14 and 16 in our code. Noticing an odd issue with these SVGs too. I'm seeing a little like, yeah, that's looking a bit off, that little line on the box. So I need to work on that. Um, something I'm noticing too is that I think we're missing a line here. Yeah, we need email templates to be crossed out on this thing. So I think that's the issue and that's why this bit here is sitting down lower than the others. I want all these titles to be on the same line. Um, so again, I'm I'm not just commenting, hey, this is off. I'm thinking myself about the re what the reason for that could be and trying to provide a solution. Sometimes I might write something like this just to um, tell Corey what I'm going for here because I don't know if changing padding is the answer. I don't know if it's something to do with the button. I don't know, but I'm telling him my goal is for the spacing to be even at the sides and at the bottom. And so then he can figure out what the best solution for that is. All right, let's see what happens if we click get started on one of these options. Right, we get to our migration form, which is great. This looks exactly how it needs to, um, but we do need that quote still to be italicized. So I will just take a screenshot of this page also, to send to him. Let's see what happens to this when I shrink screens too. Ah. See, this doesn't really need to be quite so thin on the screen. It can, um, I think we've got this spanning eight columns at the moment. 10, oh, six. Okay, yeah, that's really small. That can be wider for sure. And what about, if we go to one of these larger ones. Cool, so something I asked for Corey to do was to have, um, the data that I'd already input in the form previously follow over to here as well. So this is pre-filled and this is pre-filled in the form, which is great. And he's managed to do that, so that's awesome. We use Gravity Forms for things like this on our website. So Corey hasn't laid out this form himself, but he's gone through and added classes to style things to match my design. So that's looking good. I won't make you sit and watch as I fill out this whole form um, and go through the last few detail checks, but I hope you enjoyed seeing this process of how I evaluate and give feedback on the build of a website. The main things I'm looking out for are, does it match the design that I gave? Um, I look out for spacing. That's often an area where issues can happen. Um, it's where my like keen design eye immediately goes to and, and sees things that may not be immediately obvious to anyone else. Um, yeah, spacing, fonts, looking at images and how they're performing um, and also testing on different screen sizes and making sure it's looking its best and doing what I want it to do. This is just the first draft of Corey's build and it's also the first pass of me 
going over and giving feedback to it. So um, mostly paying attention to the bigger things that need to change at this stage. And inevitably, once Corey makes these changes, which um, because I've put them all in an vision, he can ask me questions in there as well if there's anything that needs clarifying in the feedback that I've given. But once he makes those and gives me another build to look at, inevitably I'll catch a couple of smaller, like more final, finer detail oriented things um, that will still need to be changed. So yeah, usually the feedback process is a couple of rounds for the build of a website like this. Hope you enjoyed seeing the process though. Um, please make no judgments over our lack of a design system at the moment. Like I said, it's coming and I'll probably film a video on that uh, when it happens. Right now, the design system is really just in Figma. It's, it's not reflected in the code base, but anyway. Hope you enjoyed this nonetheless. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.